Okay, what we've got here is a standard light fitment with seven lamps. These are G4 type and they are 10 watts each. So the combined consumption of this lamp is around 70 watts, which is quite a bit, particularly if you've got a lot of lighting. This one's in our kitchen and with all the other lighting combined, your bills could be quite high when running something like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this to run LEDs. Uh, well, I've already bought some LEDs. These are the kind of things you can buy on eBay. I'll show you those a little later. Uh, what we need to do is we need to change the driver because the transformer in this unit will not power the LEDs sufficiently. So I'm going to take this lamp down now with its two fixings and then I'll show you the process when I'm done. Now what we need to do is we need to remove this unit and replace it with an LED driver which is the only thing that will drive LEDs properly because of the way that um, the voltage is required to be delivered to the lamp. Now I've already purchased in advance some replacements for the G4 lamps. I'll show you the G4. That's the G4 that we've removed from the lamp. I'll show you that, see if we can get a bit better focus on that for you. But you'll, you'll know what the G4s are. Okay, and this is what we're replacing with. This are, uh, these are some of the relatively new encapsulated um, LEDs and these are rated at 2 watts each. We've got seven lamps in this particular unit. So seven of these at 2 watts is 14 watts. So we need a driver capable of driving minimum of 14 watts. Now the nearest thing I could get without jumping up to a 30 watt, which would have been safe to use, um, is a 15 watt. Okay, this, this is a 15 watt electronic LED driver or converter as it's entitled here. So that's what we're going to be replacing this unit with. Now in this particular assembly, this unit is uh, on a self-adhesive um, tape. Now I don't want to leave anything underneath it because I risk distorting the silver finish on the other side. So what I'm going to attempt to do is to attempt to rotate it to try and get it off its base. I might still have to use a little bit of leverage underneath, but I'm going to do it very, very carefully so I don't damage the finish on the other side. I can just hear the adhesive starting to go with some gentle prying. It would probably be advisable to use a wider plastic spatula if you've got such a thing. And there we go, that's removed it from its uh, self adhesive retainer. So uh, on one side, of this we've got our primary circuit which is our live in which is our connection to our to our rows or whatever mains connection we've got on the ceiling um, the other thing just to recap is please ensure that you're isolating the uh, mains wiring correctly preferably from your fuse box uh, just to make sure you're absolutely safe uh, obviously that needs to be done before you disconnect this unit okay so what we're going to proceed to do now is to remove from this unit, the primary feed or the mains 240 volt input. So let's remove that. Set that to one side, and then what we're also going to do is to remove the 12 volt or secondary connections. I'm using the word primary and secondary because that's traditional uh, transformer uh, speak, um, but you will understand what I mean. Okay, so we're going to remove those. Now they are identified as um, brown and blue, which is usually reserved for 240 volt um, colouring. You could well find that you've got a red and a black in the case of the lamps that I've got here, um, unlike most LEDs, these are not dependent upon being connected one way around or the other. They will happily be connected in either rotation, so you don't have to worry too much about your positive and negatives on the secondary side. Now this is the driver that I've purchased, which has got its own attachment cables. I don't need those, so I'm going to take those off. Out. OK, 
Okay. Set those covers to one side so we can put those back on for safety afterwards. Now this is the point where you need to be really, really careful and read what you're doing, watch what you're doing, because it's very easy to connect this driver the wrong way around. And you would not want to be putting mains power, 120 volts, uh, into the secondary side of this unit because it will destroy it and it probably make an awful mess of your ceiling. So, best thing to do is we've identified that this would be the input side, which would be our main side, or our 220 to 240 volts AC. So I'm going to remove that. This is our small supply wire that we had on our fitment. So I'm going to connect this and I'm going to use the colorations that we've got, which are brown and blue, um, to connect to our live and our neutral terminals on this driver. Okay, so pop that one in there first. Please ensure that the connection you're making is inserted fully or as far as it will go into that connector. If you think it's not right, undo it, check it again, and tighten it up because we do not want these coming loose or we do not want them floating around. Okay, so that's the first one connected. With this particular one, access to these terminals is not that easy, but with a bit of persistence, we can get the second one in. So that's gone in now. Again, ensuring that it's inserted fully to where we need it, and then lock it down. Once you've locked it down, it's always proved just to support the terminals and just make sure neither of those are going to come loose. Once we've done that, we get our safety cover back on. That's to ensure that there are no other parts within the lighting assembly that could touch either of those live or neutral terminals on our input side. Okay. Ensure that our insulation, this is a heat shield insulation, is fully uh, or not uncovered outside of this unit, again for safety. Okay, so that's our primary or our input sorted, our mains input. So we're going to remove from here the secondary or the 12 volt output and always double check that you can see on there 12 volts DC for our secondary and on the other side just to confirm 220 to 240 volts AC on our primary side. Okay, so now we've got our feeds out to our lamps. Um, they are identified as positive and negative, which in this case the positive would be the brown, the negative would be the blue. So I'm going to connect those in the same manner. I would advise that be done in the event you get LED lamps like this that require polarisation. In other words, the positive to be fed to the positive pin. Some do, some don't. These are happy either way around. But if you make sure that your wiring follows through in the correct colours and the correct polarities, it'll make life a lot easier for you. Okay, again, we make sure they're fully inserted, that they're nice and tight, and then we can put our cover back on. Now with this particular one, we've still got some self-adhesive tape there. So I'm gonna reuse that. These units are fairly lightweight. With some assemblies, you might find you've got a bolt protruding from this panel with a nut on it which you can use to relocate this driver through this hole here on the bolt and then tighten that up. Uh, some have one, some have two, but then some just use self adhesive These are fairly lightweight units. They don't get particularly hot in use, so it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to pop that back on. I'm going to relocate that underneath all of our cables and then locate that on our on our base and that's nice and firm so I don't have to worry about that coming adrift just remove the other elements from the old driver from my location screws there at this point now I'm going to rotate this over and you can see that we've got our G10 lamp so I'm going to proceed to remove all of these replace these with my new LEDs and then I can show you the results afterwards. Okay, now we're ready to switch on and see how our lighting looks. So there we go. 
and I could actually like the cool white look it looks quite nice in our kitchen with our other LED with our under LED under lighting uh, some of you may prefer slightly more yellow uh, color than that so again look at your color temperatures um, it's easy to uh, go online and see a color temperature chart will give you guidance as to the color temperature of your lamps they're normally available in a cool white a white uh, warm white the the white and warm white will be slightly more yellow in color really depends what you prefer but uh, there we are and that can be done with most fixtures in a house where you've got low voltage uh, assemblies like this where you're using a 12 volt g4 or 12 volt mr16 those kind of fittings um, or lights uh, you can do this conversion with uh, well, I've done this with this. These are these. I think, if I remember correctly, we purchased from Homebase, um, and I'll show you in a second the other ones that we've got, which are just a standard IKEA fitment. Right. I was talking about colours of lighting, colour temperatures. Um, what I'm just going to do is to uh, exchange one of these for a warm white LED, just to show you the difference, so that you can see. I'm just going to isolate the power briefly while I change this. Off, make sure I don't break it. And swap one of these over. Now, I feel to swap because the holes that these go into are very small. And after looking at the light, I can't see them now. I've turned it off. Right, there we go. Let's just pop that one in. Let's just pop the cover back on. And if I turn these on, we'll see the difference. Okay, so you can see very much uh, different. That is actually a warm white, so it's a much more yellow light. And looks particularly strange alongside the white. However, if the whole assembly were made up of those warm white lights, it wouldn't look so bad. It would look much more like a standard lighting colour that we're used to. So there's the difference between the two. And hopefully you can see that quite clearly. Let's zoom in a bit on that. There we go, that's the, the different colours. Okay, these are a standard IKEA assembly. Again, we've got seven G4 lamps. And with this one, you can see that these have been converted to run LED. The same process, we take down the assembly and within that top section there, we can exchange the transformer for an LED driver which will drive these correctly. The risk if you don't change the driver is that these may flash, um, they may not drive up or they may not illuminate properly uh, or simply the transformer just will not start. Um, but now we've got a low energy version of this. Um, we're now consuming 14 watts instead of 70 for this fixture. So if you've got a few of these fixtures in your house you've got a considerable energy saving to be had and any energy saving we can do these days is always an advantage. Hope the little tutorial helps. Any questions, leave some questions for me on the YouTube channel.